You're listening to the all new Blessed Beats Radio, and you're tuned into the Not So Christian in Me Show, the show that is faith based, edgy, and funny, where we let everything out on the table without shame in a no judgment zone, so that we are able to help each other be better Christians. I'm your host, Southern Girl Denise. And I'm your co host, Kyra Harris. And I'm your co host, OBJ Elba. What's up, what's up, you guys? You guys are tuned into the Not So Christian and Me show. I'm your host, Southern Girl Denise, and today we have a special guest in the building, Mr. Christopher Allen. What's going on, Chris? What's happening? I'm pretty good. How are you? <laughs> That's good. I'm glad that you're doing pretty good. Pretty good. Thank you so much for, for coming back on our show. I know this is a different setting, but thank you for being our guest to, to return. You are, I think you're our first guest to return. So we're happy. Okay. Happy about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so before yeah, we get to our first, <laughs> first time, yeah, first time usually, online. Usually. This is my first time online without going to the doctor. Without it before we get started, we always ask our <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> Now, before we get started, we always ask our guests to um, play a game, and you, you're familiar with our games, but we're, we're switching it up a little bit. We're doing something different since we're, you know, virtual. So today's game is um, two truth and one lie. So you'll tell me two truth and one lie, and I will have to guess which one is the lie. So, so throw it at me. Okay, okay, okay. Let me see. I took notes. I'm going to try to have to remember. Okay. <laughs> Number one, um, I used to want to be a rapper. Mm -hmm. Growing up, that's one. Um, um, used to want to be a rapper. <laughs> Two, what else? Oh, um, what was it? Oh, Come on man. now. Oh, lunch. <laughs> I once had lunch with Beyonce. Once had lunch with Beyonce. I know that mm -hmm. sounds crazy. And, <laughs> For some people, um, like yeah, yeah, right. And the the last one is that um yeah, I want to live in LA. Um I'm gonna go with wanna be a rapper. That's the lie. The lie? <laughs> nope. That's the lie. That was true. That was <laughs> wow. African American male at one point in time dream. We felt like and I can freestyle. But okay, that was okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna get you to spit yeah. some. <laughs> one day I'm gonna spit for you. Yeah, everybody knows <laughs> a photographer, so they don't know that side of me. So what happened to that dream? You know what? <laughs> I was so dope that eventually I just had to move on because these record labels wasn't messing with me. No, I. Uh, <laughs> you, so crazy. Grew up, you graduated and you get a certain age and then you decide you like you ask yourself, is that realistic? For me, it wasn't realistic, but for mm -hmm. others, it's still magic. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I see. Okay, so um, next up we have our blessing segment. So what we do, we ask our guests to talk about one blessing. So what is your one blessing that you would like to talk about? Man, my one blessing is literally um, just how much peace I've had. I've had a lot of peace within the last all two or three months. Um, never once worried about what's going on. Well, I'll take yeah. that back. I never was once worried about my income or job-wise, career. None of that. That's good. Why, so why, for me, why? that peace is the blessing. The blessing is in having peace among chaos around you. And okay. if you watch the news, right. I do a lot. And it's and I, I literally, I can't be grateful, have, have a lot of gratitude. Why do you think you have more peace now during the COVID-19 versus the piece before? Um, before, <laughs> but even before COVID, I was quarantining. I literally was spending a lot of time inside trying to see which direction did I want to go in my business. There were a lot of things that I, was, that I found myself doing that I no longer wanted to do. So trying to close mm -hmm. those doors, COVID made me close those doors. So it made you get back. You had plenty of time to figure out how do you want to come out of COVID 
how do you want to go back out there and you know what does your brand look like what does your business look like do you want to do some of the same things you've been doing or do you mm -hmm. want to completely pivot so i've had time to process those thoughts make sense oh yeah because it's a lot of downtime and, and sometimes you know god can only speak to you when you when you you know when you're down so that he can really right you know, give you your vision clearly, you know, so I definitely agree with that 100%. Um, right. So this, this brings me, oh, no, go ahead. I was saying, especially without a lot of distractions. Right. You didn't have to worry about um, getting invited places that you could or could not go. You, sometimes we get distracted because we find ourselves going somewhere where we really need to be at home working mm -hmm. on our plan. Mm -hmm. I'm guilty. I'm sure we're all guilty. Oh yeah, but, I know I am. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I, I'm. I see you on that 100. percent I even saved money. <laughs> Man, did I tell you how much money I saved? This whole, the whole COVID. Your gas tank last you like mine almost lasts me a month for me personally. Right. <laughs> so it was a I'm yeah, a person. Like I move around a lot. So mm -hmm. I'm always going to get, I'm always eating out. That stops. Oh yeah. That stops a lot for me too, especially during lunchtime, man, I will go eat some fast food in a minute during lunch break. <laughs> <laughs> and be right back. Right. You had, you had, a, you had a right. jet to get there. Yep, you like <laughs> That's so true. Well, uh, my blessing of the week is being able to use social media to help market others like yourself. So that's okay. has, has really been, um, you know, my blessing this week. And then um, that led me to this week's Bible scripture. Speaking of social media as a resource, it, it leads to today's Bible scripture, which comes from 2 Corinthians 9 and 10. Um, for God is the one who provides seeds for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide an increase. He will increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Now, this scripture can be broken down several different ways. And since today's topic, talk, you know, we're talking about technology. I looked at it as a way as the seed being our technology and bread bread to eat is our social media <laughs> so okay I, I broke it down like that i mean it's several different you can break it down several different ways but when i when i um did some research on different ways that you can use resource resources i came across that scripture okay if you guys would like to those who are tuning in if you guys would like to submit your prayer request i just submitted a link in the chat box so feel free to submit your prayer request Prayer request. request. <laughs> Prayer request. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, so now that we got all our praises out the way, let's get to the nitty gritty. And who is Chris Allen? Tell us about you, Chris. <laughs> who is Chris Allen? I see a lot of people. I see a lot of people, but I never really get a chance to introduce myself to them. Listen, mm -hmm. <laughs> I like a great vibe. I like good people. Um. I'm literally just a kid who grew up in my 30s now. <laughs> like, <laughs> photography-wise, I enjoy taking pictures, but I even more so enjoy watching other people take pictures. Um, I love teaching, as you know. I love teaching mm -hmm. people. How, just If it's not just photography, I love teaching them how to learn something that they didn't know before and to see the excitement on their face when they learn how to use a new app or... Um, like my mom has been Googling the world and learning about <laughs> different places and cooking new meals, new meat uh, ingredients. Okay. So that makes my heart happy. Like that's who see like from the heart, I'm just, I know people say I'm a good person, but I know mm -hmm. I'm a great person. And I love, man, I just, I kind of love people. Okay. Yep. Now, before we start talking about your photography business now you know before there was uh, photography you know there's technology, technology so yeah. I, I know we've been talking about that for a while now um you know it's been talking a lot of people been talking about it on social media so let's talk about the value of technology during COVID 19 because mm -hmm. it, it seems to has you know have grown um significantly you know mm -hmm. since COVID 19 so um which company do you think is benefiting the most the with most, this new change. yeah. Um, I definitely feel like any tech company that allows like mm -hmm. how we are communicating, yeah. any broadcasting um, um, technology company 
companies like Zoom. It's all we've been hearing. Mm -hmm. Zoom is like um, Def Jam. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom right. is like Death Row Records. Um, that's all we've been hearing about. And, and then right. along with that are um, just other, what are other technology companies? Um, I think internet companies are winning. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, hands down. We need some shares. <laughs> Give us some shares. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Like and share, exactly. Yes, technology um is really um booming right now. You know, other companies are plummeting, but technology is steadily steadily growing. And I think a lot of companies that was uh oh <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um a lot of companies that was you know, that was struggling financially, I think technology actually has boosted their um, their income. You know, I think it mm -hmm. actually had did a turnaround for them, you know, it actually been more beneficial to them now versus versus before COVID-19. So I right. definitely see a lot of business growing. However, do you think that businesses will continue to grow after the COVID-19 is over with? Um. I think they will. I think it's going to take some time for them to get back in the swing of things. For example, restaurants that are now open. Um, I'm sure you heard that it can be like 25%. Um, what is it? Occupancy? Like 25% mm -hmm. of people. So that's not even 100% of their customers. It's 25. It's going to take some time because you still have lights. You still have um, bills that's associated with running your business. So yeah, it's going to take yeah. some time before they get fully back on their feet. Um, company cruise lines, I feel like they'll bounce back, but it's just going to take some time. Yeah. Do you think it'll probably be the end of the year or next year? Um, honestly, when we're talking about profit, I definitely think it's going to be starting next year. Yeah, it if would be that, like a first start. That. I think next year would yeah. be a first start for a lot of companies. Right, because if you look at it, the first quarter was January, February, and probably March, but we kind of went into this in March. And mm -hmm. so that second quarter, it's a lot of missing funds. It's a lot of people who, you know, you, you miss out. So they're going to have to make up for it somewhere down the line. Right, yeah. that's true. Now, now we're going to move on to talking about Cell phones, because I know that that's that's your brand. Ooh, and, you know, <laughs> I gotta get crunk. Well, yeah, get crunk on this one, because this is this, when, it, when it's the iPhone coming. Right everybody look at me. My sister be like, "You the iPhone, huh?" I'm like, right. yeah, you, Queen Latifah. <laughs> uh, now, I think this is a question that I was gonna ask you when you came to the studios that at that time, but I never got a chance to ask you this. But do you think? Um, do you think? Camera, camera, um, cameras will become like cell phones. Like, do you think they can? They will make a camera and have it will have the option to use it as a cell phone versus a cell phone using it as a camera. The opposite direction. Yeah. Do you see see um, them creating something like that? Um, I don't think so. That's interesting, but I I can't see I can't see them making a camera that's like a cell phone. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just can't see it. Even though they, <laughs> they're pretty close. Like, you, we yeah. hear the word Android. We we, mm -hmm. we we hear that name before. But there are some cameras, there's a line of cameras out there that's compatible with Android. So the apps on the camera are com kind of compatible with the Android operating system. So that's close. You can't, you can't talk on a camera, but it still has the same technology, if that makes sense. Right. No, it definitely yeah. makes sense. Matter of fact, shout out to, there's a photographer named Grizz. Um, he has one of those cameras that, and he showed me, the back of it looks just like a cell phone. Mm. It was a camera, but you say it was a camera. It was a camera, it was a camera with interchangeable lenses that you can um, buy different lenses for it. And okay. it was a shooting camera, but it had, the back of it looked like a cell phone, touch and everything. Yep. Oh wow! Well, that's a start. That's, that's definitely a start. A start. that's definitely a start. Right. For those of you guys who are tuning in, we're talking to Chris Allen about the value of technology during COVID nineteen, and we're getting ready to talk about some of his his um, cell phone projects that he got going on. So, if you guys want to drop a message, do so now at this time, or if you prefer to call me instead, you can call me at eight three two two seven one zero zero eight five. We're going to keep the conversation going, so we're going to talk talk to you about. Um, your cell phone, the cell phone mm -hmm. thing that you got going on. So tell us a little bit about that. 
okay, now I got two phones. I was mm -hmm. I wanted to come out in March and be like, I got another phone. And then we had COVID, but um, I got another phone. <laughs> yeah, this whole time I've been figuring, I've been thinking, how can I, how how can I get my digital dopeness kids involved with um, doing something online? I didn't want to just do Zoom just because everyone else was doing mm -hmm. Zoom. I, I wanted yeah. to still be impactful, which means I really wanted to still connect with them and teach them something that they can actually say they learned, even though we weren't face to face. So with that being said, I came up with um, two different projects that I'm working on, getting ready to drop. This um, one is going to be a digital dopeness, like scavenger hunt, photography mm -hmm. scavenger hunt, where like kids that. will use their phone or their parents' phone to take pictures of different objects around their house. <clears throat> um, okay. And we'll, we would actually, I have to think of how can we meet to make this happen. So we still may use Zoom to discuss, like show and tell, like look at your, mm -hmm. let's look at your work. And then I'll be able to give them tips about their shots, their photos. Um, okay. During that process when we meet up. Okay, so this is part of Digital Dopeness Kids? Yeah, it is, but I, I, I thought it would be good to open it up to anyone. So Okay. Um, yeah, you know, like um, your kids, my nieces, mm -hmm. nephews, they'll always be a part of Digital Dopeness Kids and they'll be able to participate. But I want to open it up to other kids in the age of six years old and 16 years old and um, and still still determining the fee on that. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm, I really want them to get a taste of it. If they want to join Digital Dopeness Kids, they'll be able to join that club. It's a kids club, social media club. So, okay, tell us a little bit about um, Digital Dopeness Kids. Um, yeah, well, it's been a brand off and on. Like everyone, I started teaching photography lessons, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to stop there because a great majority of kids they want to learn how to start their own YouTube channels, and they want to learn. Um, well, they know how they know TikTok, but they can teach us something about TikTok. But mm -hmm. I didn't want to just limit it to photography. So the goal is to include photography, video, storytelling, and actually having and managing their YouTube pages. I really want to get into that. Yeah. Um, so between last year and now, I'm able to now kind of like um, manage both of those brands, shoot your shot with Digital Dopeness Kids, and get it popping, get it started. Oh, yeah, I can definitely see you doing a whole lot of stuff with your YouTube because these youth love YouTube and you know you got to add in that TikTok now. <laughs> yeah, you, you do. I'm like, if I see one more adult TikTok and <laughs> Right. Do a TikTok challenge. <laughs> right. Know? Throw that right. in the mix. <laughs> Sometimes the kids need to turn, the kids can turn into the teachers because a lot oh, of yeah. adults don't know the purpose. You know, what that do? What that Facebook do? <laughs> right. right, right. The kids can teach us how to operate TikTok and some of the younger younger applications. Because mm -hmm. my mom be be saying TikTok. Like, let me see what that TikTok do. TikTok. <laughs> yeah. tic -tac. And when, right. Facebook, when Facebook first came out, my dad would say, um, he he called it Facebook, but <laughs> Facebook. He was still thinking about MySpace and right. Facebook and book together. I'm like, just don't say don't say nothing. Right. I, yeah. I haven't heard that one before. I have Facebook, not heard that I'm one like, before. um, bro, you're creating a whole new uh company. <laughs> right. Okay, so you have the scavenger hunt, you talk about com combining um your digital dopeness with a broader audience. Um, what else are you doing? I know you was talking about some more things too. Another drop was mm -hmm. just gonna be um it was gonna be a virtual um career day. And okay. Same kid, same for the kids, um, because we know a lot of people. So what I wanted to do was bring on different um, types of creatives um, and introduce them to my kids. In doing so, we don't have to just introduce them into when we were going to school. And if they even had a career day, they were professionals that we were introduced to, police officer, firefighter, nurse. We've never been introduced to a photographer. Or oh, we've never been introduced right. to a DJ, and, and you don't have to want to be a full time creative, but mm -hmm. you can still talk to one. You can do it on the side, and there's nothing stop. Especially now, since kids are there, it's a different generation than when we were growing up. So 
they actually can be a DJ right now. They can be a photographer right mm -hmm. now. And and they need to know that. I don't know right. if they know that. So know that. Most yeah. of the career day, like I said, if I was going to do something online during this COVID, it had to make sense. And I didn't want to just do it just because it sounded cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So the first two months, I didn't have the answer. I did not know how I would continue on with the programs that I wanted to get started until mm -hmm. until I um till it came to me. Okay. Yep. That's that's pretty that's pretty cool. So do you plan on doing anything else um besides digital dopeness? Or you, you I'm about still it? I'm still contemplating on I have several people that say shoot your shot, a virtual shoot your shot. And it, although mm -hmm. it sounds good, I it, it has to make sense for me. Because right. the whole purpose of it was to connect technology with the actual physical experience. Mm -hmm. So we kind of defeated the purpose a little bit because I was bringing the technology to the actual event. And now that we're not doing events right now, I've pushed everything to 2021. Okay, so 2021 is when you're really going to like um, launch a whole lot of um, new things for um, digital dopeness, pretty much. Well, well, for shoot your shot. Well, for, that's what I mean. Yeah, shoot your shot. Yeah, yeah. But now you the goal was to get 100 yeah. creatives. The goal is to get 100 creatives in the room for a giant, huge shoot your shot at a private location. Okay. And so lots of surprises, lots of photographers involved in that. And that's what I was working on right before the city and the world shut down. Shut I was down. like, you know what? I got an ambitious goal. I was like, my next shoot your shot is going to be a uh, hundred people. And I, I have a, um, a partner, a mm -hmm. venue partner. And instead of making it public, if you get invited, you get invited, <laughs> and we'll tell you where it is. But yeah, that's what I, and I I've, I'm still going to do it. It's just not going to be this year. Well, the good thing is you have time to plan it out. You know, God give you this time to like really plan it out so it can be bigger than, than all the other shoot your shots. Cause I know that right. you planning on doing um you was going to go to different cities to do shoot your shot too right so give you time to plan. yeah you can plan all that out for 2021 so Absolutely. 2021 is looking pretty good for shoot your shot and I'm it is i feel like i feel like we will get back in the swing of things right and a lot of people are going to have to work together if they wasn't working together now they really got to work together now because you got to oh, keep yeah. going got to keep your businesses going Exactly. Now, um, when you start back doing the um, digital dopeness um, out in the field, are you gonna um, try to do some? You gonna do something during COVID nineteen? Are you trying to wait until everything dies down? Um, I was trying to wait. To be mm -hmm. honest with you, yeah. Um, I don't take any chances with mm -hmm. with that. Um, especially for me, just health wise, having yeah. a I hate the word compromised immune system, but yeah. It just causes me to be cautious and not quick to jump back out there. Because even if if you did do that, how would you implement social distancing? Um, oh, that's cool. Because that would be hard. <laughs> it, no, actually, it's, it wouldn't be because a lot of activities I have planned are at parks. Okay. And so the thing about it, kids, they don't really understand space. <laughs> you got to really <laughs> let them know, hey, we can't be all bunched up together. We have to spread out. And at a park, I like for people to work in pairs and teams. Yeah. So it will it will just have to be like a few lessons on what social distancing is. First. But I feel pretty safe. But like I said, some of the other activities like um, the pizza parties or the places mm -hmm. indoors, I'm not really feeling that right now. But I'm 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 getting close back to where we can all meet at a park long as we're spread out, you know, six feet. If grownups can't follow the rules, <laughs> right. it's going to be hard for kids to. Yeah, and I, I noticed that you did um, you did an event right before it got really bad in Houston. Mm -hmm. You got a chance to go to the park because I was kind of like, I didn't, I really wasn't sure to bring to take the kids out, you know, because it was it was at the beginning stage. Oh, it was kind of like, okay. yeah, one of our- Before they shut the city down. So I was, and when I saw you had a big turnout, I was like, okay, I'm glad you had a big turnout because I was concerned about that. I was like, man, right. there may not be a lot of kids to show up with everything going on. So I'm glad that you went ahead and did it because you had a really good, you had a big turnout. You know, right. so it's good for the kids because they got a chance to really have fun before the city shut down. 
They did. They did. Um, that was a really successful meetup. Mm -hmm. They taught me that being outside is great and healthy. Um, parks are really nice. And um, I just get ideas. I take mental notes of why it was successful mm -hmm. so I can incorporate it later. But you're right. The Monday after that, because it was on a Friday, the Monday after yeah. that, the city went into what they said, a lot, not lockdown, right now. quarantine. Yeah. So, yeah, I was like, I'm glad we got it in. Yeah, I'm glad you got it in. <laughs> yeah, I, went I, was, to the store, I went to the store and started getting snacks because I felt like I was going to be inside for a while. I yeah. started buying food, snacks, and I was just like, let me get some ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yep. <laughs> what other ideas do you want to do with digital openness? I know we kind of brainstormed on a lot of different things, too. Um, what are some other things that you um, would like to do? Well, to, to answer that question, I really would like to create a collaboration between the people who go to shoot your shot. They're not just attendees. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are my friends. A lot of them are my uh, and you've been to shoot your shot. So, you right. know, media right. personalities, you had a few people who blogged, you had people who have podcasts. I really want them to almost like a big brother, big sister. To oh, some of the kids. I like that. And those are my friends. Cause the thing about it, my, the whole point is to tell people that I always preach your phone makes you the most powerful person in the room. Mm -hmm. Now I, got, I say it, but I got to live it myself. Right. But I won't, I have to break down the age demographics that I teach that to. So I'm teaching kids, photography, storytelling. I'm teaching adults. Hey man, why you just got your phone? What more can you do with it in your business? What more can you do with it in your career? And so even teaching them photography, um, we haven't even got to oh, like uh, senior citizens. We haven't got to that level, but they have phones. Mm -hmm. too. So, but <laughs> it'd be good. Know. Like, take them, take them, take the new digital dopeness kids to the senior citizen homes and take pictures and stuff like that. Well, I mean, that's, a good, idea. that's a good idea. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. I was thinking of just I would never, I would never have a shoot your shot where kids or at, at that signature event. Mm -hmm. But I will have sometimes I will have activities where they get to meet those professionals, meet you guys, and be like, you have your own show. Teach, talk to them about your own show and what you do with it. Like, I think mm -hmm. that'll be really cool because now you're exposing them to other occupy other things outside of going to school, picking a major. Right, right. You know what I mean? Exactly. I like that whole concept. You know, because it's like it's like it's like almost like a mentorship too. You know, right? Collaboration coming together. So definitely like that. And I I can also see you collaborating with videographers. And like have some of the digital dopeness dopeness kids, um, like some of them may want to want to uh, focus on videography. Production I can see you video. adding that. Yeah, I can see you adding that part to digital dopeness kids. You know, and another right. part to that. Right, because we have an amazing team, and so right. um, my homeboy uh, Fetty Mikhail, shout out mm -hmm. to Mikhail, I Rise Films. Right, he has nice. The kids, for kids to see the cameras and to see a, this big old camera, I think they'll be excited for them to see a drone and how we use this drone for music videos. Like, oh, heck, yeah. I'll be excited. I'm excited <laughs> when I'm there. So yeah. I know they will be. I know they will be crunk. It's an old school word, crunk. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling your age now. <laughs> right. Lit for the kids. It'll be lit. <laughs> right. What, what's crunk? What's, what's the next word? I'd be like, what's no cap? I got a cap for you. <laughs> right. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, a lot of people didn't know that you, you know, you have a comedy side. You know, I didn't realize that you had like a little funny oh, side. Oh, until, oh, until, let me tell you. you know, I, side, and I was like, okay, Chris, Chris, a look, got a look co comedian inside of him. <laughs> I've been trying to be. I have been trying to connect who I am on the inside with outside because somewhere along the way mm -hmm. I got stuck in this professional persona and great photographer. And I was like, how can I be myself? Like I have to be on stage mm -hmm. and I don't know if you notice and shoot your shot. It creates a platform for me to be behind a microphone right. and I can kind of throw some of them in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so um, it's, it's who I am. You got to be your complete self, not just, 
like it would it would irk me to just have to be a photographer at an event no no right. no um disrespect to my photographers out there i just know like i want to be sometimes i want to hire the photographer or book my book my friends for the for the photography and let me have it let me get everybody hyped up give me the mic yeah. just they always are like why does a photographer need the microphone give me the mic so <laughs> right. pull out your cell phone like that's it's me. My voice, like coming out like come on give me the microphone right 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 because i can clown i can go i can go a little yeah. bit so shoot your shot actually help you to get out of your shell you know um i think i guess you could say yes i would mm -hmm. say shoot your shot um i guess so I guess it did let yeah, me get out my, my chair. I really started seeing you um, being more interactive with, with, mm -hmm. with people when I started seeing you doing the shoot your shot events. I'm like, okay, okay, I see Chris. Right, and <laughs> it's the crazy you know, part when, when you hosting your, when you're hosting an event, you're a lot mm -hmm. of roles. So yeah. I quite naturally got on, got well, call it stage, but I quite mm -hmm. effortlessly on a microphone started speaking and just saying the things that i know in my head what this vision looks like and it wasn't all tech it what digital dopeness the whole name came from fusing together um something that i thought was creative and innovative with technology because before we all use technology like we djs use ipads iphones um videographers use cameras but they were all known as like we just provided the service right mm -hmm. nobody really cared who was behind the camera as long as we did it i was like no my goal is to expose all of us and shout us out like that's that's the person who's making that video happen is right. that videographer that photographer is what make those dope pictures and my examples are, are like um um tony my partner tony and my partner um samitra mm -hmm. like they're their work is the dopeness and i'm like i put it i put it together and it's like digital dopeness and the dj tnt is our dj um like this is my whole team and it's normally like i said we've been known to provide these services but my dream is to like no we're gonna all be put on you know what i mean yeah. right that's the only way that so, you're gonna go right so yeah. yep we're Brilliant. like we're like that cartoon in the 80s was it in the 90s um <laughs> Oh, fire, sea, ocean, Captain Planet. I don't know. If you yeah, know. now I know about Captain Planet. I'm waiting <laughs> on a movie. I'm waiting on them to come out with a Captain Planet movie. Right? They, I'm they shocked they Planet, man. <laughs> I'm going to buy a I'll cool, be there. I'll be looking, watching a movie from my phone or something. I don't know. I'm not ready to go to the theater yet, but yeah, it needs to be a movie. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. I'll be, you know, whenever they do open the movie theaters back up, I would definitely be there to um to watch Captain Planet. <laughs> My kids right. don't know nothing about it, but I I pull up some old videos on YouTube so they can know all about the Captain Planet so before we go watch it. Right. <laughs> right. Okay, so um what do you see yourself in the next five years? That's a that's always been a really, really good question. <clears throat> let, me, let me first of all see what that would look yeah. like so it's 2020 so that would be 2025 so if i don't have my flying tesla by then hopefully i'll have it ordered um <clears throat> where i see myself in the next five years i literally don't i love houston but i don't necessarily mm -hmm. want to i want to be i want to live in a different city I want to experience being in a new place and I still want shoot your shot to be in multiple cities. I want to be able to come to Houston whenever I want to, because my family's here. Um, I want, I literally want my digital dopeness kids to um, be, have some super dope credibility behind it and right. backed up by with, with some major sponsorships. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So we don't Definitely have to worry about so funding. Like, we don't have to worry about right. parents to keep uh it'll already be covered <clears throat> right so t tell us a little bit about shoot your shot it's for those who don't know what what, sh what is shoot your shot shoot your shots shoot your shot shoot your shot is the name of the the event the interactive photography event mm -hmm. so again my goal is to educate and to share some of the knowledge that i've got that i've gained as a photographer over mm -hmm. the years and so it's my way of teaching my audience my peers mobile photography 
And that's just the basis for a catalyst for a whole night of fun. Um, it's a way to interact. We commun uh, we network different. Now we networking with our phones, but what I'm finding out every time I host Shoot Your Shot is that it's an event that people need to experience for actual fun mm -hmm. without having to go to the club, without just being a number in a room. Um, it's an event where some, you're going to meet a creative and you're going to meet somebody who is a dream chaser, comedian, oh, yeah. poet. That's who been come. That's who I didn't know. That's who I've attracted to this event. And I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's a, a creative in every single city in the country. And so knowing that we're not just limited to Texas. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going to be going to different cities, doing shoot your shots, showing people how to use their cell phones to make some dope pictures, would that stop other people from hiring like professional photographers? Do you ever think about oh, that? No, I get that a lot. No, absolutely mm -hmm. not. Because the other purpose of Shoot Your Shot is to um, highlight and showcase photographers. So again, right before COVID, put everybody on, a, like stopped us from our businesses. I was planning on hosting the Shoot Your Shot in Little Rock, Arkansas, because mm -hmm. I partnered with a really, really great friend of mine. She's a dope photographer that, that she used to live in Houston. And um, her name is Jennifer Missouri. She, I was going to partner with her and showcase her for her city. So each city we go to, we will highlight some dope photographers from that city. So again, you should, I can teach you as much as possible how to shoot pictures with this, with, with your mm -hmm. cell phone, but you can never replace a professional photographer when it comes to editing, correct, like um, animated pictures, mm -hmm. um, just a higher quality, higher level. So these are cool. These are dope. Your cell phone yeah. photos are cool, but there's always there's always going to be a limit. But there's no limit on creativity. It's just a limited limit on quality. If that quality. makes sense. Yep. Now, have, have anybody came up to you and, and said like, man, I was going to um, I, I I hired my cousin to, to take the pictures with his cell phone because he you know he takes some good pictures with his iPhone, but it, it doesn't look professional. He you know him holding a cell phone versus him holding a uh, um, a professional camera, it just didn't look professional. Have anybody said talk to you about that? Um, I feel like I've had some conversations like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I technically can do I can do an event with my cell phone, but a lot mm -hmm. of it is psychological too, meaning right. It looks if it looks like an expensive camera, the mm -hmm. the perception is that you are expensive. You're professional. You know what you're doing. But I also know that my, what my camera can do within the right lights, lighting. Up. Yeah. Um. You didn't ask me this, but I can tell you, I once did. Um. My camera messed up on me, and I was doing a birthday party, and I ended up having to use my phone that whole night. And oh, wow. the music kept going. The DJ was still doing what doing what they do, and nobody missed the beat that I was taking pictures with my cell phone. Mm -hmm. And so it's possible, but I would, like I said, you do what you have to do when those kind of things come up. Right. You just keep moving. The but good thing is, it's kind of hard to charge fifteen hundred, fifteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And I show up with my cell phone. <laughs> right. We, we not, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's why, I, I, you know, I think about that all the time. Like, man, you know, I could just hire this person to, to take the picture with their cell phone because their iPhone, you know, do some dope pictures, but it doesn't right. look professional, especially talking about like a, a major event. They cut, right. like, that's my photographer right there. And he has a cell phone. You right. know, they, they won't take the person serious. You know? Right. No, no, no. And they don't. I can tell you, people also will look at that like, they just using a cell phone. I can do that. <laughs> uh, my, uncle Blue, my uncle Blue can do that. Black can do black. Black, black, come here. <laughs> I know that's what they're thinking. They think right. like, you know what I mean? So right. I've had people go to the car, go get the a real camera, just like my, not that it's not a real camera. They would go get a professional camera and mm -hmm. try to do what you do in essence, right. you know, in events. So yeah, you got people that would try to do that. 
Right. All right. So, so how can we find Christopher Allen on social media? On social media? Well, I still have my MySpace. Um, <laughs> MySpace. What do you have? To log on? Face? I tried to log in. I promise you, I tried to log in, but it wouldn't let me log in. <laughs> you probably forgot your password. It's been so long. <laughs> that too. That too. Um, I primarily like Instagram, which on Instagram I'm at C dot Allen Experience. Okay. Um, C dot Allen A L L E N Experience, and then. On Facebook, I have a group. It's called Shoot Your Shot. Um, you can put it in your search and you can find it. And okay. I manage that group. Yo, yo. Okay. Several different ways to reach you. <laughs> yeah, it should always, to me, I feel like it should really be one or two. One at the most. Because, then you know, Yeah. we always be like, here's my LinkedIn. Here's my Facebook. Here's my LinkedIn. Here's my Twitter. <laughs> oh, yeah. My Christian Mingle. Yeah. Right. But I think if you have that base name, you can search all across the board on social media to find you, you know, if it's right. the same name and make it easier for everybody. Right. All right. Now, before I let you go, I have one more segment in this call, but thank God. So what I do is I, I, I'm going to read a sentence and you have to fill in the blank. So let me know okay. when you're ready. All right. I was all going right. to, I was going to do blank, but thank God I'm a Christian. I was oh. going to, I was going to do blank, but thank God I'm a Christian. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was going to cut somebody out. <laughs> Don't we all? Um, online. But I'm online. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I, yeah. It's hard not to get into a debate with people sharing their views on social media. Right. I try to avoid it. I'm like, I don't want to get into it. It's going to turn into an argument. But when mm -hmm. somebody says something very bad or negative, you're right. <laughs> Hold your yeah. tongue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that has happened to the best of us. So I'm glad that you're a Christian. <laughs> right. And I'll, I'll even tell you this I've even had to pray for those people, and they don't, you they would to. never know it. I pray for them because mm -hmm. I want my heart pure, I want my heart to stay pure. Absolutely. And you have to pray before you respond, you know, mm -hmm. that way you respond with a pure heart. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Chris, for being our special guest. We pray that God will continue to bless you in everything you set your mind to do. Thank you. Thanks for having me again. No problem. You have all of our support here at the NASA Christian and Me Show. Do you have any final thoughts or shout outs? Um, not, you know what? I want to shout out to everybody who's avoided Corona. I want to pray for the people who have family members that, you know, may have passed away of sick with, with that virus. But um, all the people who don't, I don't know. Stay up. Yeah. Stay safe. Exactly. Mask up. <laughs> yeah, mask up. Yeah. Mask up. <laughs> Definitely. Well, I would like to thank everyone who tuned in today. If you guys are interested in being a guest, sponsor, or even like to submit your music to the Not So Christian Me Show, be sure to reach out to us on Facebook and Instagram. Until next time, remember that no matter what you're going through, God will see you through. Stay blessed up. Peace.